dos organizadores do Mighty Bear. A gente gostaria muito, mais uma vez, de agradecer a presença de todos aqui. Hoje é o sexto evento que a gente faz desde o início dessa jornada. Então, mais uma vez, muito obrigado pelo apoio de vocês, pela presença de vocês. E hoje a gente vai fazer, a gente vai ter uma novidade. Alguns dos nossos uh, palestrantes, vocês todos, vão uh, iniciar as palestras em inglês. Então, a gente vai fazer esse experimento hoje, a gente, vai, a gente quer ouvir muito o feedback de vocês para ver se vocês gostaram, não gostaram, querem que a gente mantenha o um evento em inglês ou querem que a gente mantenha o um evento em português. Esse evento é para vocês, então é muito importante, a gente gostaria muito que vocês continuem é, deixando o comentário de vocês, o feedback de vocês lá no Facebook ou venham falar com a gente depois do evento. É, a gente falou isso bastante, esse evento, como a gente falou, é para vocês, então toda a opinião, todo o comentário, sugestão que vier de vocês é muito bem-vindo. É, mas, bom... É, só uma perguntinha rápida aqui. Quem que está vindo hoje pela primeira vez no nosso evento aqui? Levanta a mão. Legal, bastante gente. E agora vamos ver quem que já veio aqui em um ou dois eventos? Ou mais? Bom, uh, para os que estão vindo pela primeira vez, sejam bem-vindos. Espero que vocês uh, continuem uh, vindo, vindo nos próximos eventos. Façam amizades, tomem uma cerveja, aproveitem que hoje tem o deal de 5 dólares do burger. Quando vocês compram uma cerveja, 5 dólares do burger, então. Eu queria agradecer o pessoal da gerência também, que fez esse deal para a gente. Uh, e agora eu também queria, uh, vou passar a palavra para o Thiago da Time to Travel. Uh, Time to Travel tem sponsorado a gente, tem dado um, um apoio bacana, acredita na nossa ideia. E... Nós do ITBR, a gente tem em mente é, o espírito de tentar ajudar o pessoal que se chegou, o pessoal que já era da área de TI no Brasil, ou que está com alguma dificuldade, ou precisa daquele apoio, aquele empurrãozinho inicial para entrar no mercado. Então nós temos profissionais de todas as áreas de TI aqui na organização. Então venham, conversem com a gente, se vocês precisam de uma dica, a gente toma um café fora daqui, ou venham, conversem com a gente após os eventos, a gente está mais do que feliz em poder ajudar vocês. Então agora eu vou passar a palavra para o Thiago, vai falar um pouquinho aqui sobre a Time to Travel. Oi gente, boa noite. É, então, para os que vieram aqui pela primeira vez hoje, a gente tá normalmente a gente vem para os eventos, é, às sexta-feiras, às terça-feiras, a gente fica ali no cantinho para dar orientação, para dar dica, para dar é, caminhos, né, de que, que a gente pode buscar em termos de estudo na Austrália. Né? Sempre bom falar que a gente é uma agência focada de estudos, de intercâmbio, mas a gente trocando muita ideia. Vamos... <risos> Mas a gente trocando muita ideia com o pessoal do ITBR nessa intenção de ajudar e, e compartilhar né, e a gente trabalhar todo mundo junto. Ah, recado rápido, hoje a gente não vai se estender muito, normalmente a gente faz apresentações de cursos, mas hoje eu vim aqui só para convidar vocês. Segunda-feira a gente vai estar tá fazendo um workshop lá na agência sobre mestrado em Project Management. Então se é de interesse de alguém conhecer um pouco mais como é que é a estrutura do curso, quantas horas, quantos dias na semana, quais são as, as condições de bolsa de estudo para fazer um mestrado, direitos de visto, direitos de partner visa, enfim, várias dúvidas que o pessoal tem é, sobre o mestrado, que está sendo cada vez mais popular. A gente vai estar tá lá segunda-feira às 5 horas da tarde, também tomando uma cervejinha, trocando uma ideia nesse, nesse clima assim, familiar para a gente, é, enfim, todo mundo compartilhar e se ajudar. Valeu, galera, mais uma vez, estamos juntos. Quem precisar de alguma dúvida, dúvida dica, informação, tudo que quiser, a gente está ali para bater palma. Valeu. Valeu. Legal, 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 legal. Já pensou que legal que seria um, se a gente conseguir crescer isso daqui para ser do tamanho de um TEDx? Ia ser muito legal, né? Ouvir aqueles palestrantes que a gente sempre olha o TEDx e fala assim, nossa, é demais, né? Já pensou na oportunidade de ouvir alguém que está envolvido na organização do TEDx? É só isso que a gente tem hoje. A gente tem um cara que ajuda a organizar o TEDx de Sydney. Sério! Uhul! Isso é algo assim pra mim. Uau, só isso daqui já é o, o, o tagline suficiente. Além disso, 17 anos de experiência na área, Senior DevOps Engineer na Amazing. Tem uma história interessante sobre 9-11 que eu acho que vai vir por aí, sobre uma decisão que não foi assim muito boa. Mas sem mais delongas, vamos receber o Ricardo, fantástico, Ricardo Smith. Uh, I will be talking English, that's my first talk in English, so I don't know if the next speakers are, we will talk in English as well, so sorry for my bad English if I have, so here we go. Uh, my name is Ricardo, uh, I'm a DevOps engineer, I've been working IT for a while now, and today I'll be talking about cloud, serverless and lambda. It's a really high level talk, because I have only 15 minutes, 
To be honest, I will need, I would need at least one hour to talk about each topic, but I have only 15 minutes. So 17 years ago, um, it was 11 um, September 11, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was actually one of the biggest mistakes I made in my life. I just want to share that with you guys. So basically, what happened in that day? You know, th there was the um, terror terrorism attack in US. And I, that time I, I used to work for the uh, website of Record, the Record uh, channel in the website. In that day, I got the list of Brazilians that were the su survivors from the from the terrorism. But I understood the thing wrong, and they published in the website saying that that list were the Brazilians that died that day. <laughs> so yeah, it was a really bad mistake. Um, Okay, cool. So today we're going to talk about cloud, serverless, and Lambda. And to talk about clouds, I want to tell a story to you guys. So this is João. João didn't know about clouds. He doesn't know anything about clouds. And he, had, he has this amazing idea to create an uh, e-commerce website to sell uh, Brazilian foods. You know, Bono, Passatempo, Negresco, and so on. And to create this website, uh, he hired someone to develop the, the application. And then after creating this application, he needs somewhere to deploy this application, to run the application. Uh, because he doesn't know about clouds, what he does is, uh, actually this is, this, is, this is the infrastructure that he needs to run his application, for servers, database, load balancer, firewall, and so on. So to have that, what he needs to do is actually he needs to buy all this infrastructure. Normally this, all this equipment comes from China and takes like at least three months to buy off this. And to have this infrastructure, he's going to spend at least $100,000. So it means it takes a long time for him to buy off this, to set up all this, all this environment, this infrastructure. And you know, so he writes his application, he buy off this, then he needs to go to a, he needs to go to a data center and put everything together, make sure all the computers have internet and have electricity and it is safe and so on, right? Only after three months he can actually start having customers accessing his website and buying stuff. Uh, so, cool. Uh, what happens in this case is in the first month he has 1,000 customers and he's making a lot of money. Everyone's buying and the website is working perfectly, right? But after one month he goes from 1,000 customers per, per day to 10,000 customers per day buying stuff. So his website start getting really slow. And then all the customers have a really bad customer experience. So what happened is, to fix that, he needs to buy more infrastructure now. He needs to buy more servers, more databases, more load balancers. And what's gonna happen here is, he needs three more months to actually have all this set up. So the problem with this is, João has his application, He's, he was making a lot of money, but because he cannot scale now, he's losing money. And that's one of the big problems when you are not in the cloud. So with cloud, this is Joana. Joana is much smarter than Joana. <laughs> uh, she knows about cloud and she has the same idea. She, want, she wants to, she, she created her website, an e-commerce website to sell Brazilian foods. And she needs exactly the same infrastructure. She needs, serve, she needs servers, databases, load balancers, firewall, and so on. But with <coughs> cloud, the cool thing about cloud is, one of the cool thing is, you don't need to buy infrastructure. You just, you buy virtual computers, right? In, this, in my presentation, I'm gonna talk about AWS. So there are actually multiple, many different cloud providers. We have AWS, we have Azure, we have Google. But in my example, I'm gonna use AWS. So Joanna, Joanna decides to use AWS as a cloud provider. And what she does, she deploys her application there. And initially, she has four servers and two databases, right? And all this stuff. After a few days, she has 1,000 customers. But after, the, uh, after a few days, she goes from 1,000 1, customers to 50,000 customers. That's not a problem for her. Because when you're in the cloud, for example, in AWS, one of the things that you can do, you can create policies where you say, basically, you define policies that says, uh, if I have this amount of traffic in my, in my website, in my application, I want to scale this automatically. So, Joan, in this case, she doesn't need to worry about buy, buy uh, infrastructure from another country. So, if I compare Joan and Joana, Joan would need at least three months to have stuff set up. Set up. Joana, because she's using, she's in the cloud, she can have all this infrastructure, maybe one day, 
Actually, in a few hours, you can have all this set up for her. So, talking about clouds, what is the most powerful thing about clouds? It enables you to move faster. So the time for market, when you create an application, is much quicker for you to get an idea or a product and actually deploy this on the internet and start selling stuff. Another cool thing, it helps to scale applications much easier because you don't need to, you don't rely on, on physical infrastructure, right? Uh, and also it's much cheaper. So the same application, one running in the cloud and the other one not running in the cloud, one would cost at least $100,000. And the other one would cost, I don't know, maybe 500 bucks per month to have maybe that, that infrastructure. Uh, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about serverless. Serverless is one of the things that uh, cloud enables us to, to use. So serverless goes for serverless, right? It means you don't have servers running your, on your application. Uh, and serverless is actually changing the way that people build, think and build applications. Uh, and one cool thing about serverless, whoever is actually developing the application, they can focus on the core product of, 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 on the core products instead of worrying with all the infrastructure around the application. Uh, serverless, so just one, one really important point here. It doesn't matter if you are a developer, if you are a sys administrator, if you are a DevOps, or if you work in QA. This is something that you really need to understand and actually start studying. Because if you get the evolution of you know technology, we go from infrastructure like the physical infrastructure that I was talking about in the data center, then you go to the clouds and serverless is the next actually big thing that everyone in this room actually should understand and should be able to talk about it. So serverless, the, the, the four main cool things about serverless is one, the first one you don't have to worry about managing servers. So it doesn't matter if today you have 1,000 customers or you have 1 million. Everything is gonna is gonna work and it's gonna scale automatically for you. That actually the flex is scaling. Um, you know you don't need to worry about thousand or hundred millions. So your application is gonna keep running automatically for you. High availability. So it means you know you don't need to worry where you're gonna deploy your application if it's going to be deployed in Melbourne or Sydney or also along. And the other cool thing that's actually the main the most important one. Uh, if you have an application that no one is using. So you create your application and you deploy this application. If no one is using, you are not paying anything. If you are, if you only thousand users are using your application, you are only paying for the top, that top thousand customers using the application. If you have one million, you're gonna pay only for that one million. Can you guys hear me on the back? Yeah? yeah. Uh, talking about serverless applications. Serverless applications actually we can break a serverless application in three main components. So the first one, actually let's talk about the second one. The second one is the function. Function is where um, you write your application, your code, a piece of code, and we call this a, as a function. And we deploy this, this to a, a service called Lambda. You can write this, this part of code using five different languages. So it's Node.js, Python, Java, C Sharp, and Go. And to execute that, this, this code for you, you have some, uh, you have different ways to execute this. So it's what, it's what we call event source. So to execute, for example, this function, um, you could have, for example, someone making a request to an API, for example, a RESTful API. Or, for example, you could make, uh, if someone make an insert or a delete or open date in a database, you could invoke that code when a specific SQL transaction happens in a database. Um, and then when this function actually gets executed, you can do something else. You can, you can invoke an API, you can, you can do a lot of stuff, actually. I have an example of this in the end, in, in, the, in, the, in the final, um, in the end of the presentation. But for example, a really, cool, a really simple application serverless that we could build today. For example, I could have a camera here, actually capturing the face of everyone here in the room. And then this application in Lambda, I could actually get the face of each one of you guys, compare with a database of wanted people, and see if, it's a, if you are a criminal or not. And if you are a criminal, my Lambda would identify you are a criminal and could call the police and give the location that we are. And to do something like that would be quite simple and the cost of this would be almost nothing. So what is Lambda actually? Lambda is a computer service that, you do, that lets you run 
uh, codes without worrying about servers. So basically, you just write your codes and you deploy this code to to uh, to Lambda. So when you are writing Lambda, this is really important information for developers uh, and DevOps and system administrator. Uh, writing code in Lambda is actually not is not any different when you are actually writing code for the applications that you guys are doing already. There are some changes that you need to do in the code, but they're really simple changes. Uh, there are five languages that you can use, so Node, Java, Python, C Sharp, and Go. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the other ones because I don't have much time left. Uh, and when you write your Lambda function, the way that you actually execute this code, uh, you can use any of these triggers. For example, uh, I don't know if you guys know Alexa. Alexa is the device from Amazon that you can talk, interact using voice. But basically, I could create an Alexa queue where I say, hey Alexa, uh, turn on the light of my house. So Alexa would actually talk to Lambda and execute the code that I wrote, and it would, in, in, the, in that Lambda function, could turn on the lights, or turn on, turn on or turn off the lights of my house, or using a really sim simple code. Or I could say, I don't know, maybe um, if someone uploads a file to a storage on the clouds, when someone up uploads this file, I could, I could actually trigger a Lambda function and do something else. Uh, serverless is being used for many different things. Uh, one of them is image and video manipulation, for example, the one that they told you guys. For example, in China, they, the police officers, they are using uh, kind of a glass with a camera where they keep actually, while they are walking around, this camera keeps actually recording the face of every person that the police officer uh, see, look, see, and then the face of every single person is actually compared with uh, a database of criminals. This is not this application, I don't know if it's serverless or not, but we could do something really similar and it would be really powerful. Uh, we are using serverless as well for IoT, so Internet of the Things, Big Data, and Event Stream. I have an example here, I, th I think I have some minutes uh, left. So I have an example that I made uh, a few weeks ago that basically, I have this button that is connected to the Wi-Fi of the pub uh, when I click this button, it's actually what's happening. Uh, this button is talking, is executing a Lambda function on the cloud, on AWS, and this Lambda function is executing an API, uh, is making a few API calls to Twilio. Twilio is a service that allows people to make and receive calls and, and, and receive and send SMS messages. So if everything works well, and I press this, in 15 seconds, 20 people in this room should get a call. And let's see if it's gonna work. I'm, I'm getting a call. I press it. If you're getting a call, if you're getting a call, just put your... Okay, so 20 people is getting a call. I need to answer, actually. Can you answer yours? Put in the speaker. The nicest tech group in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a it's a really simple example how you can use Lambda. So basically this button is executing the Lambda and this Lambda is executing a code and making calls, right? Um, I could actually, this call, this Lambda function could be doing anything, right? Maybe I could, again, give an example with camera again. I could have a camera on my house, and when someone gets to my house, this camera could actually send the, send the face of the person to a Lambda function. This Lambda function could, could actually compare the face with a database of my friends and my family. And if it is that, if it is someone from, like, one of my friends or one of my members of my family, that I could open the door automatically for them. Or I could receive an SMS in my phone saying, hey, I don't know, Jack is here. Um, you know, do you want to open the door for him? Something like that. And to make an application like this would be really, really simple and really cheap. I don't know where I put my, go. Cool, so uh, this is actually the codes that I wrote uh, to do all this stuff. So it's a 64 lines. Um, there are some phone numbers over there from everyone in this room, sorry. Um, this is Node.js. I could have written this using um, Python or C Sharp or Go or whatever. 
And the cool thing here is you can do so much powerful stuff. Like any any code that you can write, you can put in, you can put in a lambda in a lambda function and execute that using many different ways. It's like it's really powerful. So again, doesn't matter what you do, you need to understand how Serverless works. And another cool thing is it's so easy to actually start to learn that. There are so many cool tutorials on Google, on YouTube, on whatever. Just go to Google and, you know, Google for serverless uh, tutorial or whatever and you can learn a lot. So, conclusion. I just did it in 15 minutes, that's good. Um, so this is Joana. Joana knows about cloud and she's using it a lot. So it means Joana, when she's developing her stuff, she's saving a lot of money for her company she can go to, she can go for an idea to the market really really quickly much quicker than people that are doing stuff in physical servers um, she can scale much better if she's doing things in the physical server as well doesn't matter if today she has 1000 clients or a million clients her application is going to be available uh, so yeah be like Joanna study clouds it's really there are a lot of cool stuff out there uh, doesn't matter if you go to AWS, if you study AWS or Google or Azure or Rackspace or whatever. Um, yeah, make sure to study that. It doesn't matter what you do. Thank you.